Hopefully in this video we're going to see the X68000 Expert, a rare Japanese computer from the 80s, power on without any problems. We've already gone and done a lot of cleaning of the inside and we're going to go deeper inside to see how far all that grime has gone and also see how far I can restore its power supply before I relent and go and build a new one. Hi, it's the K-Man and Mark's with me as well. We're gonna gradually pull it apart, hoping that we remember where everything goes, starting with the dual floppy drives, which, uh, yeah, it's looking okay from the outside. We uh, probably should go and look a bit deeper some other day, but yep, so far looking pretty clean here. Very different from how it looks on the other side of the computer. And it's a bit better now that we've gone and sanded around it, but uh, it's not really budging. So we'll go and try a bit of WD-40 outside so we don't go stink up the house. Give the screw a go, and if it's still not working, apply more WD-40. And try a different screwdriver, knowing that it isn't actually a Phillips head screw, but something very similar called a Japanese industry standard which uh, this kind of random screwdriver seems to do just the trick. Then to pull out the video module and even the least suspected screw can be what's holding it in. The board inside was, yeah, looking mostly shiny, but did have a few bits of crusty areas, which uh, quite easily went and scrubbed off. And it looks, uh, yeah, a lot more acceptable now. Then it's onto the board which sits at the bottom of the case and you can see that some bits are looking okay whereas other parts have had that soft drink really go and collect and pull up on it and yeah it's not looking very nice. Apply copious amounts of IPA and then just completely go nuts scrubbing away and using cotton tips and yeah that's not nice. I even brought out the gross toothbrush for some of the least static sensitive areas. And after all of that work, I'm quite pleased with the results. Just out of curiosity, let's see how well the battery is going. And yeah, it's pretty much dead. It's gone. And fortunately, it's just one of those batteries that don't go and destroy your computer. We'll put the bottom compartment back on and it's on to the next section. The expansion cards also had a sneaky screw just hiding there. And if you want to get the board out, it just sort of slides out just like that. You can see all the RAM and Mark got a model that has two megabytes installed onto it. There is more cleaning needed to be done, but it's not looking anywhere near as bad as the bottom board. And it's also a bit of a sigh of relief to see no obvious signs of corrosion damage. Which brings us on to the power supply and it's, yeah, looking pretty good as long as you don't look too closely. So even then, I don't know, most of the caps look nice from the top, but I think it's a bit of a lesson to be learnt because you take it off and that is absolutely wrecked. You really do want to at least recap one of these power supplies because the capacitors that they put in this era unfortunately used a type of electrolytic that eventually became very extremely corrosive. So I've got this cap kit, which also has a few of the other power supply components on there as well. I cleaned the bottom of the board because it was a bit messy and the gunk on there was working against me being able to desolder. Added my own bit of gunk, a bit of flux, and out with the Moo gun. Some of the caps were so corroded that they pretty much had melted themselves onto the PCB. And some of the others, due to their size and the size of the ground planes they were on dispensing all that heat, took a bit more effort to get off, but actually looked all right underneath. Out of curiosity, I checked the one that looked all right, and yeah, it's pretty much in spec. And then testing one of the very suspect looking ones. And yeah, not even close to being okay. In the end, this is how many tested and looked okay. And this is how many were leaking and really not okay. Pretty much all the rest. All of the caps are out, so no more damage to be done by them. And so I know where to actually put the replacements back in. There's this really handy website which shows you 
all the capacitors that need to be replaced and you can even go into the schematics so you can do a bit of troubleshooting and find out what all the different codes on the board correspond to with the component. Mind you, I'm already starting to get my doubts about how well this is going to go. The corrosion definitely has gone on to the other components and you can even see just sort of in the right light where the capacitor juice has gone and leaked its way on down through to the other side of the board and even making some of the pads really fragile and the trace is looking rather gross. I persisted with it and here's my power supply testing rig with a multimeter for the 5 volt rail and another for the 12 volt rail and some are very inspired by a certain Adrian Black of the internet turn signal lights just to provide a bit of a load for the power supply. So let's see if the power supply actually works. And yeah, nothing. I might as well test some low hanging fruit. So even though it looks all right, I'll test the continuity on the fuse and yeah, it's fine. The board's not looking that great anyway. I kind of really need to run some bodge wires over those lifted traces and hopefully it will all nicely hold and you know i can sort of compensate for those missing pads the next idea is to go and test every single component on the board to help me with that i've bought this handy dandy little component tester which tests everything from resistors capacitors diodes transistors sometimes you can test components in circuit but other times yeah Probably better to go and pull it out. You sure got some interesting results on some of the components and whenever I found something wrong, of course, going and replacing it was something from the replacement component kit and when possible, testing components in line or just lifting a leg to be able to not have to completely re-solder the component. There was a lot of re-flowing of joints and... Oh man, it was quite the process. So I think now we're ready to go and try it again. So yeah, like last time, we've got that on the five volt rail that's coming out of there. We've got that on the other five volt rail that comes out of there. That's on the 12 volt rail, same one there as comes out there. And this is just sort of floating free so I can go measure all the other voltages. So hopefully, it works. Look at that. It freaking works to steal a phrase. Let's just go and check the voltages here. No, it's just gone. Yeah, it totally blew the fuse in the step down inverter. And after checking everything was fine, it blew another fuse. It was looking like I was going to have to go through and test everything again. But people on the internet were saying, don't worry about it. It's notorious for dying. Go make yourself a new PSU. So we got PCBs made up for the Pico PSU version free. It really doesn't have that many components that you need to solder onto it. And I used a little bit of ingenuity to help me keep the board flat as I soldered on the screw terminals. There's the fan plug. There's the Molex plug that you plug the Pico PSU in. I was able to use the original power switch because fortunately they put in one that has a high enough voltage rating for Australian power. The power gets converted down from 240 volts to 12 volts using this little power module, which I've put these spaces on so that when I put it on the PCB, the actual module doesn't touch the PCB board. The Piku PSU is now plugged into the Molex plug and make sure you go for one of the original Pico PSUs because that way the soft power is more likely to work and you can often tell if it's an original if it's got that yellow plug. I've put it all together in a way that if any of the modules do blow it's pretty easy to go and unplug things and put in the new module. And there's the original harness which has been screwed into those screw terminals there. I'll do some testing of the voltages, but it's pretty much now time to go and plug it into the computer and hope the computer actually works.
And yes, it is actually working. The message is fine. All it's saying is basically just go and give it a bootable floppy, which is something I'm so keen to do, you know, go play a game on this, especially once we've done a bit more fixing up of this computer. So stay tuned for that. I've put a few relevant links in the description. Thanks for watching.